What is going on, everyone? And welcome to Cart 63. My name is Ben. Thank you very much for stopping by and checking out this here video, the one I'm making for you today. And yes, if you have been following right along, I am back in the barn. We don't know for how long. Uh, today seems to be a reasonably uh, temperature day. Is that the right way to describe it? Anyway, um, <laughs> it's not as cold in New York, and it maybe the forecast looks like you know possibly a couple 60s coming next week. I know it's this is uh, what us New Yorkers like to call fall spring. It is uh, winter's not done. No, it, it's not even close to done yet. But there's these little blips that uh, that I've been in this state all of my life. And since I can remember, the weather kind of has the shift and this and that. And then there's there's fake outs like, you know, oh, you think it's going to be spring. And it's not quite because here comes the snow and next thing you know, poof, two foot of snow. That will and can happen. Um, <laughs> I'm sure of it. But today I thought I'd talk about this subject. Now, right up front, I don't run Predator class. I just have opinions and thoughts on it. If you know, if you've been watching this video or this video, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I race uh, KT100s uh, a little bit, but primarily I run UAS open cart uh, engines and in the UAS series. So my experience from Predator karting is only experience of just being on carts. Uh, I have no experience with the engine per se, but I am a observer of what's going on with that class with the Predator engine class. And I've seen this uh, uh, kind of poke up a little bit. And I had some thoughts on this, the Extreme Budget Predator. Uh, there are a couple tracks around my area that run this class. And I thought maybe I could give an explanation what exactly this class is all about. Okay, first things first. Why the Extreme Budget in the Predator class? It is already a very inexpensive engine. Well, as you all know, carding is expensive. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't know if you know that's a secret or not. Um, <laughs> any type of racing can get expensive no matter what you do. So essentially replacing, say, uh, you know, a twelve to $1,500 clone. I think that's, I think that's what they cost to be built. Uh, I'm sure you could buy used stuff, you know, four or 500 bucks. I'm sure that's out there, used stuff. Um, it, I'm, I'm just talking as a base premise of what a built clone would cost comparative, comparative to the really inexpensive Predator class, the, the Predator engine. If you don't know what a Predator engine is, you go over to Harbor Freight. They have lots of them. Uh, they have your 212 series, and then they have their racing engine, which is a, uh, they call a Ghost, which is more of a lay down version. It isn't as you know, upright doesn't look like a uh, lawnmower engine. It looks more like kind of a race engine, more like a clone would, but that is a Predator engine. Now, the reason people got into this class is because of how inexpensive that engine was. So again, why would you extreme budget? What it what What is that? That is to reduce the cost even further. Now, there are some people that have been kart racing. I will say, you know, they they may look down upon the Predator class. They, you know, like, hey, man, the <laughs> racing is expensive. If you want to go fast, it costs money. And I agree. The uh, in what I do, the more money you are you, disposable income you can invest in your program, the chances are tires, engine, horsepower, brakes, bodywork, all that stuff. It can gain you speed, but. We need a cheaper form of racing. We need to bring in the next uh, version of the racer. We need to bring in the children. We need to bring in, you know, people my age, at, you know, at 45 years old. We need to bring in racers. If we want the sport to continue, we cannot price ourselves out of it. We cannot make everything, for instance, you know, a UAS uh, cart engine can be anywhere from three to four thousand dollars upwards of six seven eight thousand dollars we can't have that people will not bite on that we need a more inexpensive version to bring in the new class of racer and what better way to have a inexpensive engine so the extreme part of this comes into the add-ons, the, the chassis, the tire, the bodywork, and, and stuff like that. I thought I would kind of break down what this class is all about. Okay, number one, we just discussed it. Engine, Predator class. Now, they would have a designation 
of what you can or can't do to it. Can you uh, can you tie up the governor? So that's not. Can you disconnect the oil uh, the oil sensor on it? These are. I'm, I'm going to put up some rules. Uh, Brandon Clapperton. He runs. He is the promoter of a couple tracks in the New York area, and these are the rules. I'm, I'm not going by them. I'm using them as a reference point, but I'm going to put them in the description or a link to the page in which I am kind of getting some of this information, but you have to have a Predator engine. Now, like I said before, there's the Ghost, and then there's the standard 212, but as a, you know, as a, the engine package, most certainly, do you want to seal them? Do you want to mark, mark bolt heads? Do you want to put, you know, safety pins on it and mark these engines as sealed as they have not been messed with from time to time? With this, uh, you know, the Predator class, you're also going to have uh, claimer rules. If somebody thinks you may be cheating for whatever price it will be, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever the claimer rule is, that if you just whooped on some people, they can take that engine. So it keeps people from investing in a cheater engine if somebody can just take that engine for a couple hundred bucks or you get DQ'd and you're asked never to come back again. So uh, number one, engine. It has to be a Predator engine. Number two, I like this one a lot because it. I love new chassis. I love new chassis designs. I, I, I love the engineering aspect of it. And I totally understand that, you know, <laughs> say Phantom, for instance, wants to sell new chassis. Totally get that. But for a budget Predator class, 15-year-old chassis. Your cart has to be 15 years old. How do they prove exactly how old it is? I mean, you know, it, like I can tell uh, certain chassis are of new design only because I pay attention to it. And hopefully the officials running, you know, this this uh, this package at a track would be able to tell, hey, all right, but obviously if it doesn't have a, an adjustable front end, it's going to be old enough. But for instance, we are 2023 right now. That would you leave you, with, you can run up to a 2008 chassis at this moment. So I think that's really cool. It keeps... People from, you know, for instance, buying a $3,000 chassis, $3,500 chassis, you know, keeping up with the, the new, new there. It is, it gives the secondary market a chance to, to, to still, still sell chassis because, you know, once, uh, you know, once uh, some racers think that a, a chassis is flexed out, they just kind of put it to the side, sell it off, and that's the that's the end of that. And this is the the perfect time for people who don't have as big of a budget to jump on, you know, Facebook, uh, in the marketplace there, and scoop up a, an older chassis. You know, somebody's got a you know O five sitting around, O six, O seven, even now an O eight, which is getting into a little more modern, you know, cross settings type of thing, more setups that are going to be a little more modern, but it's still going to, you know, you're going to be able to purchase these chassis for not $3,500. You're going to be able to pick it up for 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, something like that. So it's going to keep the price of the class down in itself. Number three that I picked out from the uh, list on, on this class would be bodywork. No noses. No noses. Now, as a UAS racer, again, I disagree with no noses. I'm going way too fast. The people around me are going way too fast. Can you, in the UAS, can you run no-nos? Yes, of course, you can. Uh, your feet are out there. And I wouldn't suggest it. You want some form of protection around your feet. But with these little five horsepower wonders, I think that's what they make, five horsepower. They, they can't make a lot. <laughs> I assume they're five or six horsepower. Um, even if they're 10 or 13, I guess it wouldn't really matter. You're going a bunch slower than, say, I would be going in even a KT100 at 18 horsepower. So you're going a bunch slower than that. It also keeps people from ram jamming, uh, from using the bumper, uh, using the chrome, chrome horn or whatever it is they call it, <laughs> to move people out of the way. Because you knock your, uh, you knock your front end out of alignment, you bend your toe, uh, you bend a rim, you you take a tire out, that's the end of you. So you have to be, the, the, that's one thing I do like about like open wheel stuff is you have to be a little more meticulous with the way you're driving as not to harm yourself, to harm other people, to jump a wheel. You know, you get tangled up with people. It's real easy if you're not careful. You can't just, you know, throw it in there and expect nothing to happen to your cart. Your front end's all there. And your speed may be built into your front end, and it could go away just like that. So um, 
they do have on the bodywork, they say side panels can go from tire to tire. I think it's uh, 8 inches to 13 inches in the rear, so somewhat of a wedge. Uh, you're, you're able to build somewhat of a wedge per these rules. You know, I, I don't know what your track would run or if your, your track was thinking about doing it. Um, I would keep that in a minimum. I, I don't think you want to have, you know, Predator carts up there with full, you know, run what you brung or UA, UAS style, you know, body work with these big wings and stuff like that. I, I, first off, I don't think it's necessary. Also, vision becomes, you know, a little more impaired when you get these big things around you. So keeping the side panels down, no noses on those things. Uh, I think that's a really good idea, especially for your beginning racer to teach them etiquette that you're not just going to plow into the guy ahead of you without some sort of repercussion. All right, number four, uh, this kind of goes along with the engine, but I was just kind of, I was grabbing a little, another one there, pump gas, no race fuel, uh, no 110 octane. I don't even think they'd run all that great on race gas. They are designed to be essentially lawnmower engines. Therefore, pump gas is relative. Uh, I know the equipment's out there that they can dip your tank, and they can tell if you're running, you know, spicy fuel or not like that or something like that. So, you know, 89 octane, it allows for ethanol, it allows for fluctuation. It's, you know, it's obviously if you're in this class, I I wouldn't be running hot fuel. Uh, I, I believe in the, uh, in the rules that I read there, they allow for jetting of the carb. So, you know, depending on uh, where you are. Uh, at the the sea level, if you're high up or low, your jetting's going to be a little different. If it's you know a, a real dense, you know moist type of moist, <laughs> my wife hates that word. <laughs> if it's a moist type of night, you may want to rejet your car, you know, for your engine performance. Um, but race gas, it should be, it should be pump gas. It should be, you know, even if uh, I know Hunterstown uh, in their clone class designates exactly where they to get your fuel from and it's right near Hunterstown PA so if everybody buys their gas there they can actually take a sample they can pump from that pump that day say it's the 89 octane they can they can test that if they want and then if they think somebody's running some cheater fuel they can they can dip in find that your fuel rating's too high and bloop you're DQ'd so I do like the pump gas uh, idea uh, let's keep the race fuel out. Again, keeping that budget low. You know, the, the engine's cheap. The, the chassis is cheaper. The bodywork is, you know, you're not having to spend $200 or $250 on bodywork. Just some side panels and now pump gas. You're not spending 50 bucks on five gallons of VP racing fuel. Well, 60, 70 now for ethanol or methanol that I run. But uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. We don't want people, you know, uh, experimenting, getting, you know, a couple horsepower out of these things in a budget class. So there you go. What do you think? I think, you know, I I always resist the idea of a, a organization, you know, for this. But I think that if, you know, some people wanted to create a, uh, a set, rule package for the budget, the extreme budget predator class, I think that would be fantastic. You might want to, you know, for, for instance, you take the, uh, the champion rules that, that, uh, Clapperton and, and crew came up with. If you take that and you take some, you know, some of the gearing out of it, it could be like the max torque clutch. Okay. You got to run a, a drum clutch of some sort and per, you know, whatever track you're, you might want to have a gearing rule. That's fine. But uh, leave that kind of open, you know, to discretion of uh, every track because that's not acceptable. But the base premise here, you know, the engine, the chassis, the bodywork, you know, these are all things that are going to keep the cost of everything down. Tires, uh, you know, you can say things like, I, I think, for instance, they say no treads. Uh, that's track dependent, you know, slicks only. Or you can try the no prep thing. I, It's hard to... It's hard to govern that. It really is. Unless you have a tire sniffer, if, unless you're wanting to invest in that, it's going to be really hard to take away from that. And honestly, if you're if you're leaving everything on the table that, you know, that what the the drivers are piloting, it is completely up to your tire knowledge and your driving ability. Hey man, that's doing pretty good. That is, you know, it it, it takes a whole lot of the uh 
the, the claims of cheating out of it. You know, if it's just left to the driver, if it's just left to your knowledge of setup and tires, you know, it's, yes, you're, you're always going to have people that are kind of like, you know, oh, they got more tires than me and stuff, but maybe you make, you know, maybe it's a tracks, you know, discretion that, hey, you're only allowed to bring two or three sets with you. Or maybe you can only bring one set with you. Or, you know, they, there's, there's all sorts of things. Do I think, you know, maybe... I just think that if there was a, a centralized, you know, a base set of rules that anybody could, you know, just, just here, this is, this is what we're going to run with. And then any track all over the country can say, Hey, we are running by the extreme budget predator rules. And then, you know, clutch and stuff like that can be added in there. But it's just a thought of mine. I I've run in, run under a rules package for a lot of my racing career. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. I've been I've been racing for a while. I've been racing UAS. I've been running under these rules packages for a while. It keeps, you know, everything close together instead of uh, you know, just kind of wild wild west type of, you know, what you're doing to your cart type of stuff. But all right, that's a, that's kind of a tangent. I'm sorry. So uh did you enjoy being back out in the barn? Uh I'm a little my hands are a little cold, but uh it's I feel as if I have to uh, dial it in a little bit when I'm inside because my wife is usually within earshot and I know it shouldn't bother me that I've been doing this long enough uh, and it doesn't bother me as much as it used to, but out in the barn, I can be as loud and boisterous as I want to be. So I, I really do feel more comfortable out here with the exceptions of my hands being cold now. So uh, hopefully guys, I will, I'm hoping to start the two video a week uh, sequence here pretty soon. Um, I'm kind of waiting for that better weather to where I can get out here and kind of, uh, group together a bunch of videos. So it's not, so I got to start building cart. I got to start getting my, you know, myself ready for the season. I'd like to film some of it while I'm getting ready for the season, but I need a little better weather, you know, so I can be out here so I can collect this footage and get, and get it out to you guys. But, uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. It was, it's kind of something I wanted to do for a while with the new season, you know, Right around the corner here, people are starting to race down south already, or have been running down south, but us northerners are really starting to, hey, what's this season going to look like? You know, maybe maybe if you're new, maybe the extreme uh, budget Predator class is something that maybe you want to take a look at. Uh, Action Park East, uh, Champion Speedway are two tracks around me that I know are running that rules package. I wouldn't, I'll do my best to try and add the drop down menu on every video. I, anything I can ever think of, or if I do think of it, I'll try and put all that information so it's linked for you guys just to go out and, you know, check on Facebook or whatever it is. So again, thank you very much for everybody that stops by. Did I do the thing? I probably didn't. It, it hit a like on the video. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you like this content there. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> My old channel that I used to do on the beard stuff, never said that. So the fact that I even kind of sort of remember every time is, is I'm doing pretty good. All right, guys, I appreciate you coming by and uh, I'll see you later.